guys, welcome to another episode of Zero to 60. This video needed a different intro because it's all gone tits up. Um, yeah, this was supposed to be a charge pipe install and a comparison on the new MHD maps, but unfortunately the eBay charge pipe that uh, Dylan purchased to go on his car did not fit very well. Let's roll the normal video and you'll see me in a few minutes when I explain what we had to do to get this charge pipe fitted. See you in a second. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Zero to 60. Today we're going to be installing a charge pipe onto Dylan's 335 and we're also going to test the new MHD maps. Version 9 got released yesterday, so I'm interesting to see what difference it makes to the version 8, which wasn't a massive difference to the 7. But I know a lot of people have problems with the version 8, so high hopes for version 9 on the MHD map. But uh, the main point of the video is getting this charge pipe installed. Um, I was having a strange conversation with Dylan when we did the pop filters. He didn't realise the importance of doing a charge pipe. Uh, the original charge pipe, which we'll have out and I'll do a comparison in a few moments, is actually made of plastic and they're quite good when you're running, well, standard boost or even I think stage one generally doesn't cause any problems, but when guys start to get excited, run stage one plus, stage two, the plastic charge pipe just won't deal with that sort of PSI and they pop or crack. Anyway, let's get into getting the old one out and show you the difference between the two. Uh, I'll just get you to bring the camera in. Now it's pretty easy to get to since we've already got the airbox off. I'm just gonna remove the front pod, remove the blow off valves, and get that factory charge pipe out. Let's get on to that. Coming out. That was the T map sensor. It was just a bit difficult to get my fingernail under there and pull the plug out. But that is the original charge pipe. Let's uh, put it side by side with the alloy one and compare the two. Okay, so we've got the original charge pipe out, and now it's just a matter of um, essentially assembling the new one to suit. Now, this one is one of the cheaper. China versions. It's a running theme at the moment. We try and save every dollar we can with these N54 builds. Uh, it is really a copy of the BMS one. Again, if you're in the States, I reckon just go straight to the source, get the BMS. Um, this kit here is actually supplied with all of these hose fittings, the adapters and everything to plumb it up. has got the meth bung, which is good. And obviously it's designed to work with the standard diverter valves, not a separate blow-off valve. I don't know why guys bother with the blow-off valves when you've got an automatic. I guess it's just for the noise factor of it all. Um, first thing to do, especially if you've gone the route we did and gone for a cheaper one of these, make sure you clean out the inside of the pipe. This one's actually quite clean, but I have heard of, uh, I've heard of rumors where there's still a little bit of swarf and crap inside it from the manufacturing process. I'm gonna get on to cleaning it, swapping everything over uh, onto the pipe so it's ready to go back in the car. One thing that is a bit annoying with these cheaper kits, they don't come with a new O-ring. Uh, so we have to remove the O-ring to go onto the throttle body. Let's get on to that and we'll get it back in the car. Okay, so that's the T-map sensor, the circlip, the O-ring, and the two blow-off valve adapters fitted up to the pipe. I'm not gonna fit this elbow piece until it's actually well, I'll fit it before it goes in the car, but it will need alignment once it's in there. Something about these silicon joiners, and something to keep in note with the blower valve or the diverter valve connections, make sure that you clean um, all the surfaces that these silicon hoses are going to be mating to. I'm going to use a brake cleaner. Uh, any oil or any lubricant that's on there could assist in them blowing off, which is the last thing you want to do. You need to make sure that they're tight and not going to blow off once they've got some boost in them. Let's get this last bit bolted. Okay, so I'm just gonna, yeah, get the brake clean on and clean those surfaces that the new silicon is gonna need to be sealing on. Okay. Nice bare plastic. Uh, the reason you're using brake clean, it's just a good solvent and it evaporates nice and quickly. So it'll be dry and ready to put the new piece on in a few seconds. surfaces. Let's get the new pipe in, eh?
Okay, so that time lapse sort of cut off abruptly, and it's because it, we could see, like, within a few minutes of trying to fit it, that it wasn't going to work properly. Uh, it's all in there, and it's sort of okay, but I really wouldn't recommend one of these charge pipes, and this is why. Okay, so the first issue and my biggest concern is the angle that the diverter valve outlets come out. And I'll, I will flash up some pictures of what's going on with this. But the only way I can get the diverter valve to fit properly is basically have the silicon hose not fully on the charge pipe. And then also, I hope you can see there, it's a bit shitty in the dark, but it's also not fully on the diverter valve. Now, I don't think it's gonna come off. I've just ran this car up with some boost and it seems to be holding, but it's just not right. Uh, it's actually seven o'clock on Saturday here now, so I can't actually get the hose piece, but I'm gonna, tomorrow morning, as soon as the uh, auto shop opens, I'm gonna switch out the straight piece of silicon bend with a 45 degree, and that will give me some more clearance away from the side here for this diverter valve. And I in fact, I think that will probably fix the clearance issue with this diverter valve. The other thing, which I really don't like, it's particularly tight for the power steering line. Unfortunately, with the light, you can't really see, but I've had to change the routing of the power steering reservoir lines. But actually, the, the, the lower hose is now moved about an inch and a half further forwards just to give it clearance, because this pipe is so much thicker. And it's, it's a good inch and a half over to the left hand side of the vehicle but she's in i mean she's gonna work yeah it's definitely gonna flow nicely um it's just not very good and i wish dylan bought a bms one i've actually got a bms one on my car and i've had it off of my car uh, before when i've been checking things and they fit really really nicely and i was kind of expecting this video to be a 10 take us 10 minutes to fully install this pipe and it's taken the best part of three hours by the time I've thought about it, made adjustments, tweaked things, tested, anyway. Look, if you're gonna do a charge pipe, I really would not recommend going the eBay ones. I'm gonna put a link to the one we've purchased. If you're looking at getting a cheap charge pipe, have a look at these photos and if yours looks like these photos, don't recommend it. Um, I'll also put a link to the BMS. I think they're worth every dollar because they fit properly. All right, guys, now the other part that was mentioned at the second part of this video where we're going to compare MHD. I'm going to do that in a separate video tomorrow morning. We've actually run out of light tonight. Um, yeah, so you'll see an MHD comparison separately, and I'll put a link to the map comparison video in the corner up there. Thank you very much for watching. Keep playing with your M54s. They are good, but the cheap charge pipes have failed me. Catch you on the next one. Okay, so we've had the version 9 mapped on the car, and for the first time ever with MHD on this car, the car's not performing perfectly. <laughs>